Hello again. Hey, cranberry juice. Hey, I recommend this stuff. If you're like me, well, I hope you're not like me, but uh, I've had a long history of kidney problems in my life. Everything from stones, uh, blockages, infections, blood clots. Good stuff. Uh, but anyway, uh, this week, several of the regional shops have started opening back up, uh, mostly to limited clients. They've, you know, reduced the number of people that can be in the store at one time, social distancing, all that stuff. But anyway, <clears throat> I was so thrilled, thrown that several of my favorite shops were open again. So I did a little digging. First, I went to Cheap Thrills, Cheap Thrills Records in Princeton, West Virginia. Uh, found a few little things there. Steve Miller Band, uh, Abracadabra. I've been wanting to get this album for a long time, and it had a pretty good price there. Uh, I love the song Abracadabra, which is actually probably the best thing on the album. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Oh, and I found this. You know, I've got... Uh, I've got a, a re repress of this from a few years back. But this is, uh, this is a, an original U.S. on the date... Let me get it out of there on the date label. <clears throat> hey, this album is so good. It's worthy of having two copies of it. And uh, particularly, now this is a this is a VG. It's got a little water damage. Uh, the the vinyl itself is VG, but um, man, love this record. Love it. And I found a copy of this, also at Cheap Thrills. <clears throat> I already had a copy of this, but this is definitely an upgrade. Man, just nice and clean. It's got a little bit of writing on the back. Little girl put her name on there. But the record itself, great. It, it uh, I can get it out of there. It came with the original VJ inner sleeve. Got that VJ rainbow. Notice it's got the Beatles on the high side of the drill hole, the spindle hole, whatever you want to call it. So thrilled with that. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> it's rainy and my allergies have been acting up. That's why I'm, I'm a little hoarse right now. But anyway, that was from Cheap Thrills. <clears throat> John's Camera and Records in Blacksburg. He's been opening, um, I guess, probably more than just last week, but he's been opening limited hours. Uh, you know, everybody's wearing masks down there in Blacksburg. But I found these. I've been wanting to copy of this for a long time. Johnny Cash, Bitter Tears, Ballads of the American Indian. <clears throat> this is probably the first Johnny Cash record I remember hearing. My dad had a copy of this. Uh, oh, whenever it first came out, he bought it. And the main reason was that uh, my dad was a Marine, uh, and uh, it had that song near the ballad of Ira Hayes, which is about uh, one of the uh, Marines that planted the flag uh, on the mountain top in Iwo Jima during World War II. Uh, 
famous photograph that was made into a statue that commemorates the Marines taking Iwo Jima. So, anyway, great, great album. It's a, definitely a uh, early, uh, I guess, a concept album. Songs about the American Indian. Beautiful. Let's see. Paul Kossoff. Who's Paul Kossoff? Some of you know, some of you don't. He was a guitar player. Uh, <clears throat> died way too young. Um, you're probably familiar with Paul Kossoff, uh, the band Free, back about 1970. Had a big hit called All Right Now, which had some really nice guitar work in it. That was Paul Kossoff. And uh, <clears throat> I saw this down there. Man, this is this was a nice album. Backstreet Crawler. Mainly instrumental. Uh, it's got, um, oh, who was that singing on there? Paul Rogers from Free and Bad Company does... Uh, some vocal work on here, but just mainly an instrumental album. Some parts of it's kind of fusiony, definitely a r cool instrumental, basically instrumental rock album. And speaking of uh, guitarists, Larry Coriel, Spaces. I saw this down there and I had to pick it up. It was a decent price, too. Uh, this was. Um, <clears throat> Had uh, Larry Coyle playing with uh, John McLaughlin, Chick Corea, Billy Cobbin, and, uh, oh, who's that? Miroslav Vityos. Um, sorry. I don't have my glasses and I can't quite read that. But anyway, nice fusion jazz. This is uh, kind of like a. Uh, a lot like early Mahavishnu Orchestra. It's very, very uh, nice guitar jazz. And I got this. <clears throat> this is an upgrade. I had an old, uh, severely water damaged copy. Uh, the record is VG, but this is this is a nice, nice clean copy of Spirit to Twelve Dreams of Doctor Sardonicus. Look at that. Ooh. All right. So, uh, <clears throat> that was from uh, John's Cameron Record Shop in Blacksburg. Well, just a couple days ago, I uh, went to Taswell. And that shop is uh, opening up to, uh, uh, I think he's, he's only limiting five people at a time in the shop. Uh, but... I was there and at the right time, and he just got some new records in, which I thrilled me to death. So, <clears throat> but you know, uh, welcome back, collectibles or um, Taswell Retro Gaming. I think he goes by several, several titles down there, but it's got a lot of uh, collectible stuff. Everything from uh, toys, uh, wrestling memorabilia, games, posters. Uh, dolls, all kinds of stuff, and some records. But this was uh, one of the first things I saw. He had he just brought a box of 45s, and this was in there. Nice. He had several other Beatles, uh, <clears throat> but uh, this one was in the best shape, so I picked this one up. Yeah, we can work them out, work it out, Day Tripper. On the. Uh, Capital Swirl. Really happy for that one. Bob Dylan's first album. Believe it or not, I have never had a copy of this. I've had a bunch of Bob Dylan records and uh, CDs. But I saw this one. It, it's it's not a uh, an original first press, but it's... Um, uh, it's a later pressing of uh, <clears throat> this album, and love this. Love this album. And this is a nice, clean copy, too. 
Got it for a real good price. And here's a couple in that new stack of records he had. Paul Revere and the Raiders, Revolution, and an alias, Pink Fuzz. <clears throat> this Revolution, 1967. This one was, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call this a psychedelic album, but uh, it definitely uh, touches on some psychedelia in several of the songs. I love that <clears throat> little symbolism in the 60s. Uh, there was a kind of a thing about tea, and tea was kind of a uh, symbol of uh, enlightenment, of an awakening, usually in reference to drug use. So, could that be a reference? But, uh, <clears throat> great album. I had a dream. I hear a voice. Alias Pink Fuzz. <clears throat> 1969. I was doing some reading, uh, Alias Pink Fuzz. By the time this album came out, uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders was uh, kind of on the downswing. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm thinking that uh, the whole idea of them wearing the you know the three cornered hats, Paul Revere and the, the Raiders, you know all that. That I think it kind of, um, particularly during that time, it sort of uh, didn't help their image later on in the '60s. It helped them early in the early '60s because you know it was a good gimmick, man. They got a lot of lot of exposure. But as time went on, so if you see on this album, it's kind of gotten rid of the uh, the uniforms. But Ada's Pink Fuzz, <clears throat> when this album first came out, um, the uh, they the record company or the the the, the band sent promo copies out with, apparently, uh, didn't call it Paul Revere and the Raiders. They called the band Pink Fuzz because they figured if, if um, they send the radio station a copy of a Paul Revere and the Raiders album, they may not play it. But if it's a group called Pink Fuzz, that might spur some interest and it could, it, it could get played. This album opens up with a pretty... Uh, rocking hit let me <clears throat> and uh it's got a little some bits of a uh, little bit of almost country rock in there but this one song on there my favorite it's called i don't know it's uh almost a uh, uh it's not really a gospel tinge song kind of reminds me of uh the rolling stones circa 1969 um Beggar's Banquet, that kind of the vocals in the song, but it's a beautiful song. Uh, that was worth it. <clears throat> it's another one I saw. Blaze by Herman's Hermits. And this is another band that was kind of um, typecast, so to speak, from their. Uh, British pretty boy pop but uh, this album here <clears throat> my guess is uh, this is sort of their answer to um, oh what was that uh, uh, Re uh, Revolver by the Beatles they've got some very Beatlesque stuff on here and uh, uh, I think there's a song by Donovan so <clears throat> I, I saw a few years ago I think re on Record Store Day there was a reissue of this but you know I could find this uh, original pretty cheap so I got it <clears throat> I'd like to do a little shout out here to uh, Cosmic Brian Cosmic Brian over at uh, Cosmic Vinyl <clears throat> you need to check him out if you don't already 
know this guy. He recently did a uh, uh, <clears throat> kind of a history of bubble gum. It's an ongoing thing. Uh, I think he's had the first two episodes of his history of bubble gum music. And just so happened, I watched that video day before yesterday. Uh, I watched his videos. And when I went to the uh, shop in Taswell, I found these. And this is what I love about vinyl community videos. It can be very educational because if I had not watched Brian's, Cosmic Brian's video on bubblegum, I might have just passed these up. But man, these are wonderful albums. This is um, Kazanet's Cats Super Circus. Quick, Joey, smile. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm sorry. Oh, mmm, cranberry juice. And uh, I think this was uh, Ohio, Ohio uh, Express, the Ohio Express. It was their first album. Beg, Borrow, and Steal was a, a hit off of here. <clears throat> this is a nice, this is kind of a garagey bubblegum album. All right, wow, getting a little long, 16 minutes already. Well, anyway, this is the last one. Gee, I was hoping to knock this out in less than 10 minutes, but you know how it does. <clears throat> and another shout-out is uh, Psychedelic. Derek. I'll, if you want, I'll put a link to his channel. He's got this thing about these private press records. And uh, since watching some of his videos, I go out and I see something like this, and it just looks like, Wow, it looks like something that, uh, it's a lot like what he shows on there. This is Born in a World by Michael Roden, or Michael Rodden. Uh, I'm not sure. <clears throat> it looks almost like a, kind of a gospel album, but it's not. This is more of a um, uh, folk, kind of a singer, songwriter folk with a lot of country rock mixed in. The gorgeous album, man. Love the great songwriting on there. Good guitar playing. Uh, man, this is a keeper. I've, I've since getting this thing, I've played it like three or four times. And uh, it's also it looks like it's been autographed to Becky or for Becky Love Michael. And. Uh, <clears throat> if it's a real autograph, I don't know. I think it is. This is, uh, take a look at the label here. Yeah, born in a world. All right. <clears throat> so that's it. That's my uh, latest finds. So glad that, you know, uh, much of the country is starting starting to open up now. Uh, <clears throat> this um, I won't go into the politics of the the virus situation or whatever. You know, you make your own choices. I deal with it my way. And uh, <clears throat> hey, we're all going to make it. <laughs> Peace and love, everybody. Cheers.